Hey everyone, it's David Oakout Farm. I'm standing in my boiler room and my uh, kitchen sink is directly over my head. So, I figured this was a good place to put a reverse osmosis filter that you can see right here so we can have some nice clean water at the kitchen sink. And uh, you won't have to rely on bottled water or anything like that. You pay this thing once, you replace the filters every 6 to 12 months, and that's that. So, if you are currently buying bottled water, maybe this is an option. Let's check out the installation. Let's take a look. Basically, we have our, all of our filters. I don't know if they're in the correct order currently. They'll all screw into the bottom of this guy. Not sure which one, but one of these hose connections will be water in. One of them will go to the storage tank here. One of them will be an outfeed back to our faucet. So I'm not sure without looking at the manual which is the in, which is the out, and so forth. But that is the, the basic gist of the setup. Now I have to install it. First step, screw the sucker to the wall. Um, additionally, this thing has a drain. So I have run a piece of uh, tubing. Now this is the same stuff you would buy for a um, you know humidifier or ice maker hookup, the same plastic tubing. I've connected it to the check valve. A black water valve, I guess you could call it, but there's a check valve. Make sure uh, nothing can flow backwards into your filter. I run it around the room, and it goes all around here, and behind my boiler, and it comes down, and it drops into the condensate pump for my boiler. Okay, here's each of the filters. Each one is uh, I'm put that here. Here's a plastic bag. <clears throat> Now the next step now, which was taking this this hose here, connecting to the outlet of the filters of the pre-filters. So these are three pre-filters. And additionally, I hooked up this yellow wire. This is uh, from basically the output of the uh, <clears throat> the output of the final canister. Or actually no, it's the input of the final canister. Anyway, so this is uh, travels through this this block, comes into comes into here and it pressurizes this tank. So this is an expansion tank, just like actually that one there for my hot water. So there's a rubber bladder here, right where this weld is. Bottom half is filled with air. Top half will be filled with uh, water. And what happens is as the pressure builds in this, it compresses the air down here to basically make a, a it makes a pressure vessel. This makes the pressure that feeds the faucet. So we've got this tank put right here. They didn't give me a bracket or anything, so I put a big heavy tie strap on there so it can't go anywhere. Now it's time to connect. This here is the final, final output. So this is the last stage of filtration. After it goes through this, this is now going to go output to my faucet and to my ice maker. So I have to make that connection now. And then over here, this is the water inlet. So I have to attach something to that. All right. Now I've connected up a freshwater feed. This is uh, this clear tube here. It runs over this way, goes up the wall, and currently it's not pulled taut. I haven't connected the other end yet, but it runs to the other side of the wall. And over here. And uh, well, it comes out right here right now and it's just dangling, but it will connect to this saddle tap right here. I absolutely hate these things. But this is installed already in my house. This is the uh, copper pipe running into my dish, my uh, ice maker. So I'm going to use this as my water supply. At some point, this will go away, and I'll replace it with a true ball valve. 
but at least for the time being, this is going to be my water supply. I'll disconnect my ice maker from here, connect my plastic pipe back to the uh, back to the reverse osmosis filter, and that'll work. On the outlet now, put in a T, one to the sink, one to the ice maker. Each has its own valve in case something happens or we have to replace the refrigerator and disconnect it or something like that. Also on the inlet, I have spliced in another uh, another valve so I can turn this off when it's time to service this right there. And I have now installed the pipe up to the sink. It goes up through the floor up there. Dirty dishes and all. But uh, we have a soap dispenser. So I'm going to take that out. Uh, put it in our faucet. Not bad. Up to the water line. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I hear water flowing. Oh. So far, so good. We got a weeper. We got a weeper. Okay, all it required was me pushing this in a little bit farther. It stopped leaking. Another thing I've noticed is, um, out of, uh, which pipe is it here? This low one right here, coming through my check valve. I don't know if you can see the bubbles, but that is the, the waste drain line. Oh, that runs over to this pump that is now pumping my condensate away to my sink. So it's doing something, for sure. Must be filling this tank. Reverse osmosis water. Alright, that's the basic gist of the installation. I know I didn't show the actual individual bits because it would have been far too long of a video, but you can see in, in general what is involved. Uh, this kit is actually designed to mount directly underneath your kitchen cabinet. They want you to put it under, under the cabinet with your sink, and you would have far less piping than I did here. But I just thought of laying on my back and putting this in under the sink, number one, as being kind of crappy. I thought of the fact that I'm going to have to take these filters off, and that would then drip all over the inside of the cabinet and things like that. So I just didn't think that was the best place to put it. But if you're okay with those limitations, then you could actually mount this onto the sink and only have a few feet of piping to uh, connect between your water supply and your uh, faucet. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, maybe this is something that might fit for you.